most of the last times I you know I, I just just got sick from them, you know, nothing really happened from them. I didn't have to go to the doctor. And each time you were you were thinking of killing yourself? Yes. Or trying to I don't know what I was thinking of. It. Just didn't care to me. How did you feel before you took the, the tablets? What sort of things were happening to you at that time? I guess I was just mad. I didn't care whether I lived or not. Each time that you took these tablets, you were angry? Yes. <coughs> you have some difficulty in handling your anger? Or? Yes. What actually happened? What, what sort of things make you angry? Well, just anybody you think something don't go my way, I'll get mad. Somebody will say something I don't like. Just anything. No matter what it is. <coughs> what do you think about this? I don't think I would be that one. A lot of people get mad if they don't go to the extreme, so I don't do. I can understand you getting angry. I'm wondering why do you sort of take it out on yourself? Uh, you want That's to kill I mean. yourself. Why, why do you do this? I don't know. I just, just feel like I'm taking it out. What are some of the situations that make you angry? Well, My mother won't let me go somewhere or something like that. And I won't go to go pay her, so that'd be one. It's like, that makes me mad. She has no right. I mean, she can't give me a reason why I can't go. Is it always anger in relation to your parents? No, I can hear that. Other people too? Such as who? Who no, else? My girlfriend. After you've uh, been angry and you've, you know, you've taken one of these tablets and so forth, how do you, how do you feel after that? Well, I don't feel like sh I should have done it. I should have, you know, faced up to the situation and stuff like that. Should have understood it more, you know, thought more about thought about it than trying off the handle like I did. Do you get depressed? Yes. Do you think you feel blue before you take uh, the tablet? Or after Most the time I'll get, you know, blue and then I get it. it starts on to anger and then I get madder and madder. <coughs> but after it's over with, everything's okay. What do you think about this, these sort of incidents happening and this sort of behavior? What do you think about it? I guess it's immature. I shouldn't have. Do you think there are any other problems that you have, uh, have had, uh, that are affecting you in this way? Do you think that you're, for instance, emotionally ill, mentally ill? You don't think so? Diane, could you tell me the immediate incident that precipitated you coming into the hospital? Now, this all led up to it, but what was the immediate incident that precipitated your hospitalization? Well, 
Um, I'd say the running my brother and I, we had been at each other's throats, so to speak, um, a couple of weeks prior to this, and all of a sudden one night we just had it out, and he wanted me to leave him alone, and I said, fine, if you leave me alone, and he just kept at me, saying, you're going to leave me alone, huh? you're going to leave me alone, and he wouldn't stop, and wouldn't leave me alone, and I don't know, I, I just felt the pressure, it just was too much, and I, I ran to my room, and I, was, I couldn't keep control of myself at all, I was screaming, and taking things off the wall, and throwing them, breaking them, and mother came in there, and I told her to just keep David away from me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see him or anything or again, just to keep him away. And he came in there and I really, I think I would have killed him. I, I just couldn't control myself any longer. I can't ever remember being that much out of control. But I think I would have killed him if he hadn't got me in a mind where I couldn't move. And then my mother called the ambulance to come out to the house. She wanted me to go to the hospital. About how long would you say that you had this problem of not getting along with people and the things you described? I feel for about a year now, and as time goes on, I think it gets worse. I think I've come to a point where I really need to get help now, <laughs> just go to pieces, one. What did you first notice, you said about a year ago, what did you first notice uh, that made you feel like this? Well, I guess really it was about nine months ago when Frank and I broke up and the emotional strain of thing just brought all my other little problems up to the surface. Well, I believe you said Frank is your boyfriend. Yes. And uh, could you tell me a little about uh, the relationship between you all? You were considering being married, I believe, one day. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a very close relationship. And one which was wrong. I don't know. The whole thing, it was just more than I could handle with my emotions. And when we broke up, it, it was too much for me to take care of myself. How did you react to this? What did you do? What happened? Well, I guess I acted in different ways. I was trying to commit suicide at one time and then this complete depression at another and then just going off with that and not caring for a long while. Not caring about myself. Just letting myself go. And I suppose my morals and everything. <laughs> and I think by this fall I was trying to catch hold of myself again and trying and then when my grades just went for a loop again, I failed everything, then I, I guess I just got discouraged with myself again. I felt like I had a lot of pressure and everything during the fall quarter, but when I think back on it, I, I can't really place what it was. I remember. I just felt like I was being closed in upon and that I remember I had a lot of headaches then. And I became more cross with people, more irritated at them. What was the situation at home then? Well, my parents say I don't cooperate with them, and perhaps I don't as much as I should, but 
they make it hard to cooperate and I get irritated and, and so generally a lot of fussing going on. Could you tell me who all was in the home? Well, my mother and father, my older brother is 24, and my younger brother is 10. Even things that didn't involve me that involved my little brother, for instance, is not getting his homework, some nights and everything. My parents would be too emotional with him and everything and get upset, and the whole family would end up getting upset. I remember times I get very nervous and upset, even when they didn't concern me. I've always taken Nemetal, but this time I switched brands to Secondol. And I had been in, uh, I'd been taking them um, for two months. And uh, Doctor, I have been a patient of Dr. Hubbard's before, yes. about two years ago. And uh, I hadn't taken any pills for a year. And then I did start in August. You mean you'd gotten to the point where you had to take the medicine? Well. I was taking three a day I, over, a, over a period of, since 1946. I've had that problem. I had a kidney removed and they gave me sleeping pills because I was allergic to all medicines that you would ordinarily use. I had an infection and went to the Ashna clinic for 18 months and I just just plain took too many pills and it just seemed to have been a problem that has followed me ever since. You want to get off of the medicine? Oh, well, that's the reason I'm here. I see. Very definitely, but it's, just, it's, it's such, I've had to do it so many times, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, once you start taking the pills again, it becomes more that's difficult it. to stop. That's it. I mean, I, I always think, well, now, I can handle this situation and I'll take pills for a certain situation, and then it always ends up the same way. I always, they always get out of hand. What'd you ask me? I, I've seen such funny colors. You ask me what happens when I get off of medicine to hurt. Well, I've never, the first time I went to the Pauls in New Orleans, I didn't know, we didn't, it was, it was new to us, we didn't know what to do. And, uh, the, doctors at the Ashna Clinic were our friends and they suggested going there and uh, the doctor, I was, I don't know how many I was taking, something like six pills a day. But anyway, he just took every pill away from me and I stayed awake for seven days and seven nights. And they say that can't happen, but I had three private nurses. I guess it was such a shock to my system. and. Uh, then I just packed up and came home. I couldn't take any more. You mentioned seeing colors. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, it's, every time I ever get off of medicine, mm -hmm. I can see orange and blue colors. And that always scares me. Because one time when I was getting off of colors, in the, I was in the Baptist Hospital, I don't know whether I, I had a convulsion or what, I, but I saw all these colors faced and I told Dr. Smith and he said, well, don't you trust me? And I said, yes, but then something did happen to me and I don't know what it was and I'm scared that something will happen and that's the reason I asked them to give me Dilantin because I know Dilantin is an anti-convulsant. You're frightened now? Well, I'm seeing the colors now. You're frightened that you might have a convulsion? Well, that's what, that's what I said to you. Uh, one of the nurses up there, I hope they know that they've given me enough. I have no idea what medicine they give me. I hope, not knowing me, I hope they, it's being it's being held, you know. You seem very upset now. What What is it that's causing you to be so upset? Well, I guess I'm tired of getting off of medicine. How do you feel today, Miss Hitch? Just feel wonderful. I really do. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Uh, in what way? 
Well, uh, in a whole lot of ways, uh, I'm not taking any medication now except 200 milligrams of sparing at night, and I have taken that every night for eight years. Uh huh. And it's just been a miracle drug for me. Uh, I had never slept very much in my life, and I had been sick a lot, and it's oh, comparatively harmless. I'm, a doctor doesn't bother about, you know, that. They'd be perfectly happy for me to take that the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And of course, I had, the other day I was in here to see you, I had so much medication. Yes. And uh, I had taken medication since August. And so, of course, I feel real thrilled that uh, I'm not taking the medicine. Because that is a hard fight, you know. Uh, and then uh, emotionally, I feel better. I realize I have uh, problems. I realize, I mean, of course, that's nothing new to me to know that I have problems and to know that I was escaping through medicine. I think seeing myself televised was the greatest shock of my life. It nearly killed me at the time, and physically I was so sick, too. It was hard, and but it jaked me up real short. And, uh, Could you tell me about that? In what way did it affect you? In what way did it affect me? Yes. Well, I left your office, and I went down to my room, and I cried for about two hours. And as I told Dr. Lee, it suddenly dawned on me that there I was, not so much as how I looked physically, though I looked pretty bad, but how, what a person I had become inside to allow myself or persons or circumstances for me to become such a total loss. And I thought they all sat looking like I did and having become the person I had become and for what? Did that influence your course in any way? I told Dr. Lee that for whatever it was worth, and I don't know how you all decide about te televising patients or seeing it, I'm sure you have to decide, but it was a nearly like a divine revelation to me. I don't know why and I don't know how, but it was. And as I say, it was just not my outward appearance, because it was horrible, but that was understandable. But it, it somehow showed me what, what I had allowed to happen, if it was my fault or if it wasn't. It had happened to me, and it was just gruesome, and it wasn't what I wanted at all. You thought it was a cruel experience last I did. Time. I thought it was cruel as everything to show it to me. Well, how do you feel about that now, though? I don't think, I, I think that it, in my case, it, it was one, a wonderful thing to have happen to me. Now, I don't know what it would do in somebody else's case. Do you think it helped you then? I think it, I think it helped me beyond compare. I'm real glad to, uh, real glad to hear that. And that's what I want to tell you, uh, as I say, for whatever it's worth, it would ever help one other patient, it's helped me. Mm -hmm. And at the time, though, I did think it was cruel. And um, you never see, you want to see yourself, if you see yourself that, it, it, feel about yourself as horrible as I did about seeing myself. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take. 